Will you deliver? Yes, I will. I'll keep that promise. And one thing I said from the very beginning, Eric Swalwell cannot get a security clearance in the public sector. Why would we ever give him a security clearance in the secrets to America? So I will not allow him to be on intel. You have Adam Schiff who had lied to the American public time and again. We will not allow him to be on the Intel Committee either. And you look Congresswoman Omar, her anti-Semitic comments that have gone forward. We're not going to allow her to be on foreign affairs. But we're also going to stand up to what's happening, not just in the halls in Congress, but what's happening into our higher education institutions. The anti-Semitism that's going on on these campuses and others. We will investigate that as well and stop this to make sure that America does have the freedom that we said we would keep, and we will stand up to it as we move forward. Okay, so uh, Kevin McCarthy says that as uh, the new House Speaker, he is going to strip a bunch of Democrats uh, from their committee assignments. This should have been the most predictable thing possible for a number of different reasons. For the first reason, he has a very narrow majority, which means that whatever the craziest people in his caucus say, whatever Marjorie Green or Paul Gosar want, that's what he's going to do. He is technically the leader of the Republicans, kind of, but they're the ones who are going to call the shots. He just like officially pulls the trigger on whatever they want, I guess. And the other reason why it should have been very predictable is what have I been saying for the past couple of years? Literally anything that happens to the right needs to then be done to the Democrats. So when they commit an insurrection, Anything the Democrats say about elections, the Republicans just call it insurrection. Now they say that you're insurrecting, okay? If they do a coup, then whatever, the Democrats, I guess they're cooing or whatever. So if Marjorie Greene spends years online openly calling for violence against the Democrats and talking about Jewish space lasers and all the conspiracy theories and all the anti Semitism, then we gotta find something to do to the Democrats, okay? If Paul Gosar is spreading anime videos of him and other Republicans literally murdering AOC and Joe Biden, then if they get taken off, I guess we gotta find some Democrats to get taken off. So they're gonna take Ilhan Omar off of her committee because, and this is their reason they say, years ago, she put out a tweet saying it's all about the Benjamins. And we're going to have updates on some of the people that they don't have a problem going on to that committee. But Dan, what do you think? <laughs> it's such hypocrisy. The, for, for years, I, I started like doing politics, covering this whole phenomenon of the right wing complaining that you couldn't have free speech on college campuses and demanding that you could say whatever you want to. And then they would increase the umbrella of what they would call, especially Ben Shapiro, would call anti-Semitism. And that would also include, like, I, I denounce anti-Semitism. We've done segments where we're saying, hey, what Dave Chappelle or Kanye West or Kyrie Irving or any one of these like figures are doing or saying, Donald Trump, Miley Annopolis, or figure, Candace Owens, any one of these figures are doing or saying anti-Semitic things. It's not anti-Semitic to say that you stand up against the extreme far right government of Israel and the effect of apartheid state they are inflicting upon Palestinians. That is different, but Republicans love to conflate the two and far right wing people in America who ally with the Israeli government in that way like to do that as well. It's important to make those clear distinctions because without it, you get into Kevin McCarthy's wild logic of saying, oh, I'm going to slander this person. I'm going to smear this person, say, for whatever ideological reason that I want them off of these committees. Now, now you're right, Kevin. You're right, John. Sorry to call, slander you, call you Kevin McCarthy. But Kevin McCarthy is going to ultimately just be an empty vessel for those fringe few, I mean, if they're smart, hopefully they form a coalition or a caucus of Republicans that they need to get over the edge and get those votes. Because with the seats in the House so narrow, with the swing in the House so narrow, they're going to need all the votes they can possibly get to pass things. So that's important to note there. This is definitely Kevin McCarthy's olive branch to that. But I, I similarly see, I mean, you know, unlikely, but it's certainly possible you could have another branch of moderates who on some cases go, okay, you know what, all this stuff about trans bashing or whatever, it's not going to play in my state or in my area, or it's just ridiculous. Maybe I'm not going to let you get to your 218. Maybe I'm, I'm being optimistic mm -hmm. here, but like th this, this is kind of what we're looking at here with the new Congress.
Yeah, well, I mean, they if they want to show that they're reasonable, then they can stand against this. It, this is just this is just a partisan thing. This is to deliver for Fox News. Like, what are some names that Fox News people are like? Okay, they didn't like Schiff. I guess we'll get rid of him. I suppose. Um, they they were obsessed with the Swalwell thing, even though the conspiracy theories that they've been saying about him, there's no actual evidence for them. So I guess we'll get rid of him. And Ilhan Omar is Muslim, so she's got to go. I mean, that that is how this thinking is actually going. And they could fight back against that, but they're clearly not going to. Now we want to give you a statement from Representative Omar. She says. Instead of doing anything to address the open hostility towards religious minorities in his party, McCarthy is now lifting up people like Marjorie Taylor Greene, Tom Emmer, and so many others. If he cared about addressing the rise in hate, he would apologize and make sure others in his party apologized. McCarthy's effort to repeatedly single me out for scorn and hatred, including threatening to strip me from my committee, does nothing to address the issues our constituents deal with. What it does is gin up fear and hate against Somali Americans and anyone who shares my identity and further divide us along racial and ethnic lines, 100%. And that's, look, that's the sort of hatred that a Republican can 100% get away with. The anti-Semitism that constantly comes up in the Republican Party, there is occasionally a bit of an issue with that, but attacking small Americans, attacking Muslims, that's like a freebie for them at this point. Um, and by the way, on the anti-Semitism, the interesting thing is the best argument he can come up with to take Representative Omar off is that she said the thing about the all about the Benjamins years ago, even though Tom Emmer is going to be the third ranking Republican in the House. He once accused Jewish Democrat billionaires of buying Congress, which is the exact Oops. same thing. And he's in leadership. I mean, not to mention the stuff about the Jewish space. So for Marjorie Greener, the fact that Trump over the weekend once again told Jewish Americans that they're not appreciative enough of Israel. What all the Kanye stuff and the Candace, I mean, they cannot go a week without some horrendously anti-Semitic comment. Oh, but sure, they're really worried about it. They'll they'll prove it to you by getting rid of Ilhan Omar. So the entire thing, 100% partisan. In the short term, I'm not even sure how much it matters for Ilhan Omar to be taken off that committee. It's going to be a Republican majority. They're not going to be doing anything on any of these committees for the next two years. So hopefully she'll be put back on once the Democrats hopefully retake control of the House in a couple of years. Any other thoughts? Yeah, I hope so. And I hope that the squad can use, and all the squad adjacent members can use this opportunity to, you know, mess things up for the Republican caucus. Like, call them out on the dumb things they're going to be doing over the next couple of years, because there will be plenty of opportunities for that. For more political news breakdowns, interviews, stories of activism, and me trying my hardest to care about the occasional big celebrity news story, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash the damage report. And you can ring the bell wherever it is so you don't miss anything.